Hi there, welcome. Welcome to the new space. Kind of looks familiar, maybe you've seen it in previous videos, but this is actually the new studio. It's not finished, not even nearly, but we're getting there. In this video, I want to talk about the project that I shot last year, in the beginning of April. I went to Norway to shoot a branded documentary for Stanley about two guys that are sailing and chartering people above the pole circle. I've never been to Norway. It has been on my list, but I've never had the chance to go there and suddenly I was asked to go to Norway and shoot this crazy adventure. So I'm going to talk you through this, but first let's watch the full video and after we'll dive into how this project got started and the challenges that I faced along the way. High latitude sailing undoubtedly means heavy weather and isolated conditions where self-sustainability is paramount. These are the things that brings my heart close to the breath of nature and to share this with others makes me happy. I'm uh, Olivier and I am sailing on the moon ends together with Luke inside the Arctic Circle. I uh, learned sailing on a very young age. I really uh, enjoyed it, but not so much the sailing, but the traveling part of this. After high school, I went a year to New Zealand. That spoiled me a bit. Then the idea originated that I wanted to go sailing to Brazil. We were sailing for two years. Two years of sailing we had back then was the perfect training and the foundation of the whole adventure we are doing now with the Moon Dance. It was a dream for us to earn our money with skiing and sailing. We invite skiers on board, the skiers who are also willingly to sail this boat from one fjord to the other. They stay on board for one week and we try to let them ski every day a new place. We also give them the opportunity to ski uh, the most desolated tours. when the weather is not in our favor. It's a challenge to keep the skiing guests happy. And when we accomplish this challenge and we arrive safely in a new harbor, that's when I'm really satisfied. doing the guiding on the mountains. It's Luke and me as a crew. We are doing this all from our base, the Moon Dance. It's a very solid boat, aluminium. It can handle some ice. I'm very confident that this boat is also really built for life. It's really important for us to have the best products, the most sustainable products on board. And that's where Stanley fits in. The Arctic has uh, shown us some real beautiful areas and here in the Arctic Circle we are really alone. If there are problems with the weather or with the boat, we have to fix it ourselves. in a desolated fjord and we have the chance to walk up the mountain and you reach the top you see the moon dance laying on anchor somewhere in the fjord you ski down i'm the most happy person ever since i was a little kid i have shared a great passion for nature spending as much time as possible in the outdoors something makes me feel alive when i'm standing on top of a mountain or swimming through the sea 
close to nature's precarious elements and changing circumstances. All right, guys, hopefully you like that piece. Um, first off, I really want to thank Michiel. He is the one who made this whole video happen, really. He sent me to Norway. He edited this video. He went through like 1.2 terabytes of footage that I've shot and made this video out of it. And it was a really, really challenging project for both of us, but he definitely made something really cool out of something difficult. So I am very stoked on the outcome. Let's kick off with how this project got started. Basically, Stanley is a client of Michiel and Stanley is a brand that creates or makes these outdoor products that are built like a tank. And that is also their marketing slogan, built for life. And for this series, built for life, Michiel is shooting and following you know, interesting couples, interesting people that do something cool with their lives and use these Stanley bottles for their day-to-day -day activities. So that takes us to Luke and Oliver, two guys about my age, I think, about 28, who bought a 16 meter aluminum expedition yacht and are sailing and chartering people above the pole circle. I was asked to film this project because Michiel couldn't do it. So I was the lucky one and I'm still very grateful I got to do it because I really wanted to go to Norway one day, but I could not have dreamed of anything even close to this, you know, I've never sailed in my life. So this was definitely a crazy adventure. I just tried to prep myself as good as I can by watching videos about skiing, watching videos about sailing in the Arctic and just check what these guys bring, you know, and just check what these camera guys bring. It's big though, between these huge rock walls. The run out here is just like death zone. You're gonna be with a knife on your throat. Like don't fuck shit up. So I was on the boat for two full weeks. If I bring two full weeks worth of footage home and I don't do anything about it, it is going to be terrible for Michiel to edit. So what I did, I tried to sit down every evening and just spot everything that I've shot during the day. So I made this entire spot timeline. And as you can see, it is huge. So take away this window. You can see how many clips I've shot and this is all trimmed and you know like nicely so that's a lot of footage it's literally two weeks filmed every day so what I did to make it a little bit more accessible and easier for him um, you know make little timelines like this and just put all the clips in order basically from day to day and then put it on this timeline so it was easier for him to grab clips. Um, so yeah, this was pretty much the first time that I made a spot timeline like this for a project that was two full weeks worth of footage, but it was definitely worth it a lot because also when I dive back into the project, like I'm doing now, it is super easy to find what I'm looking for. So if you're doing a long project like this with a lot of, you know, things that change constantly, just make a spot project like this because it will save you a tremendous amount of time later on. Now I can talk about this project for hours. I will not do that because that will be a long video, but I want to talk about five things that I've learned along the way, along this project, and that I definitely would take along on a shoot like this in the future. So the first thing is I definitely will shoot these projects on Zooms because that just makes life so much easier. And definitely if you're shooting a documentary style project like this in such a difficult environment, it is super helpful to just zoom the lens and you have a different shot because that will just save you a lot of time. Um, that said, you need to be aware that once you start working with zooms, you don't become a lazy filmmaker that always just sits on one spot and zooms for every shot because there's a huge difference in using an 18 mil close to the subject versus like a 70 mil far away. You know, the depth of field, the compression, everything's different. So definitely take that into account when you're shooting with zooms. But for something like this on a boat, if you're not super familiar with sailing, then it's a no brainer. The second one is always bring SSDs. I brought one SSD 
of one terabyte and then two disks of five terabyte and it takes forever. It was such a pain in the butt to be writing everything on these five terabyte lacy, lucky, lacy disks, I don't know. Um, so next time I'll definitely bring the SanDisk Extreme Pro because the write speed is like blazing fast. So that definitely is a no brainer because this one terabyte disk was full after the first three days. So yeah, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Third tip is definitely bring professional grade rain covers. Um, you know, a garbage bag and duct tape will do the job to a certain degree, but is absolutely a pain in the butt. Bring a good rain cover that, you know, works with your camera because this will save you so much trouble and hassle and pain. The fourth one is bring a lot of lens, like cleaning cloths and products to clean lenses. When there is salt water dripping on your lens and you don't clean it off straight away, it leaves marks. And these marks are ugly when there's sun shining through them. So use as much of these cloths as you have because you need to wipe it off straight away. And this goes hand in hand with like um, a, a nice rain cover because it will ruin your camera as well. So what you can also do is screw on like a clear filter especially if there's no sun, so you don't have like really harsh um, flares. But if you use a clean filter, then, you know, it protects the front element of your lens, especially interesting if you're using old vintage glass that is not really replaceable. Now the fifth and final tip, and that is something that really, really is important to me, is lower your expectations. I kind of have to be aware of my expectations next time I do a gig like this and really be realistic and look at what the client or what the project is all about way deeper than just the surface, if you know what I mean. So that is something that I really took away from this gig. My expectation should be lower because it was really difficult to get over this while I was there. So yeah. So if you've got any questions regarding this project, please hit them up in the comments below. I will answer all of them. Um, and yeah. This was an unscripted video, so I'm very sorry if I was rambling a little bit, but I didn't really have the time to make a proper script and to dive into this whole thing because I've been so extremely busy with this, you know, studio thing and like the whole building and uh, I'm exhausted as well. So, uh, well, at least I'm very stoked on this project and I hope you guys are stoked too and, you know, liked what you saw and uh, again, Ask your questions in the comments and we'll see each other next time. Later.